Hey everybody, thanks for watching this Premiere on Script video. My name is Eli and today I want to share with you guys a couple of different ways that I work with markers in Adobe Extend Script and I can bring those over, you know, into my HTML panels. And this is a really fitting time to talk to you guys about markers because as of the update of Premiere up to CC 2018, there was this big issue with markers in the Extend Script API. And fitting, last week, they just came out with CC 2018.1, and so now the API isn't broken. They patched that up, and so it's all good to go now. However, if maybe you don't want to go up to 2018.1 for some reason, your team isn't ready to upgrade, what you can do to work with these markers is come into your Adobe Creative Cloud panel here, and if you come down to you know Premiere, make this little drop down, you can see other versions, then you can install Premiere Pro 2017, which is what I was doing for a while there to work with markers, and you can work with that version. Anyways, let's get on to talking about markers. You know, the great thing about markers is that we place markers for a reason. Whether you're marking a place with bad lighting or bad audio or good clips that you want to keep in or bad clips that you want to cut out, whatever the reason for placing markers it can be really easy once you know how to do it to then automate the processes that you want to accomplish from those markers afterwards. So today I'm going to just talk to you guys about how to read and store marker information in a multi-level array. Then we'll go into how to change existing markers. And then at the very end, we'll wrap up the video with how to create new markers. So I'm going to load up uh, extend script here. And we got a little bit of window space over here. We don't really need to see too much of this. But what you can see is that I have a sequence here with five markers. And let's start off by just asking Extend Script how many markers I have out there. I'll make a variable, num markers, and then go app.project.activesequence.markers, which is the markers collection we'll be accessing all through this video, dot num markers. And then I will alert us num markers and it will return us with how many markers are there? Five. So that works. Let's keep moving on. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a new variable, call it markers, and this is just going to be attached to that markers collection that we accessed up here. Then I'm going to create a new array, call this mark array. Uh, it's just going to sit there empty and then make a new variable that I'm going to call the current marker. Now this first piece of code is going to look pretty big to start off the movie but I swear it's really not too complicated. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a for loop to loop through each of those five markers. And once we're in that for loop, we're going to create a temporary array. And the goal of this temporary array isn't to store it so that it can live outside of this for loop. What we're just going to do is loop through, gather a bunch of information about each one of these markers, and then push this temp array into the mark array that we've declared up here, making it so that we have an array within an array. So if we want to access the first item in that array, we can go mark array brackets zero brackets one and access a piece of information. This is the best way that I've found to just run through and store all the marker data. So let's continue. The first thing that we're going to do is say if a is equal to zero, meaning if it's on the first loop of this for loop, we are going to grab the current marker variable which is right here. And we're going to go markers collection dot get first marker. That will return the first marker in this sequence and bind it to current marker. Then what we can do is take this temporary array we created and push the current marker dot name, current marker dot start dot seconds, current marker dot end dot seconds, current marker dot type, and current marker dot comments into the temporary array. Once we're done with that, we have an array that has five items in it, and we're just going to push that temp array into our mark array. So to go back to what this just did, we stored at temp array bracket zero the current marker's name. Then at bracket one, we stored the start time in seconds with the next item in that array, we did the end time in seconds. We did the current marker type, which means, you know, a chapter marker, a segmentation marker, a comment marker. And then finally, we did 
the comments in the final place in that type of array. So we can see in here name, you know, in time, out time, comments, and down here the couple of types. What we're going to do in this next area is say that if A is greater than zero, then we'll take current marker, which on that first loop is the current marker is the get first marker. Well, we're going to change that now to markers.get next marker and then target current marker. So basically, after the first loop, we have targeted the first marker. And after this, we will just continue to run through jumping from one marker to the next. And it's kind of a bummer. We can't just go app.project.activesequence.markers and then place, you know, say I want to see the fourth marker in the sequence, place a three in there. We can't do that. We have to jump between them one by one. So that's why there's this way of storing it all in array. That way it's easier to access later. So let's just go ahead and real quick, we'll alert after this whole for loop is done, what mark array looks like. So you can get a visual on that. And we will run it. Okay, there's the number. And here's what that array now looks like. We have the first marker's name. Looks like it comes in at 10 seconds, 10.21 seconds. It ends at 10.21 seconds because there's no duration to it. The type is a comment, and then you can see there's two commas right there because there's no text actually in this first marker for the comment area. And that just keeps going on throughout for each one of these. You can see the third one, if we come down here, uh, it starts at 32.7, it ends at 53.1. So that's just what it looks like. Now we can access this deeper by coming in here, right here, this will access the third marker's start time, the third marker's end time, and the fifth marker's uh, type, I believe is that, that's what it's gonna be. So if we run that back, the number of markers, we then have the whole thing. We have the start time of this long duration marker. We have the end time. And then we see that the fifth one in the sequence is a segmentation marker. We can double check that, and it sure is. So there's the first thing I wanted to share with you guys, just this really easy way, really easy code to just run through and gather all that information that you want to gather from all the markers that you've been placing while you've been editing a sequence. Now, let's come down here to the next area I want to share with you guys, and this is how to change existing markers. So in this one, we're going to do another for loop with A equals zero. If A is less than the number of markers, we will add another onto A. And then we'll do an if statement to start things off. We'll say if A is equal to zero, meaning if it's on the first loop through, we will make current marker, which we still have declared up here, markers dot get first marker same thing as before because we have to remember jump one by one and then what i'll do is i'll come and uncomment this and we will set the current marker set type as chapter so that's going to change this marker right here which is a comment marker into a chapter marker then the loop's going to run through again if a is equal to one current marker markers dot get next marker we will set this second marker type to segmentation. And then on the third loop through, we'll do the same thing and we will do current marker dot name and we will change the name of this one that says great sequence here. We'll change it to um, the name is this now and we should be able to see that pop up right through there. Now just a reminder, we have to run each of these consecutively because we're relying on this first marker and then this next marker. So we can't make it to the third marker without this one and can't make it to the second one without this one. Anyways, you get the whole point. Um, let's just run it. And there we go. We have changed this first one to a chapter marker. We've changed the second one, though the color didn't change, to a segmentation marker. And this last one, we changed the name to the name is this now. So you can do this with, these are pretty straightforward, right? You know, set type as segmentation. You just set it to the type you want. You can do this action to any of the attributes you had above, uh, like the comments or the name. Uh, you just 
call that current marker dot name and then make it equal to the new string that you want to add. So that's how to change existing markers. Now let's jump into creating new markers because I'm sure if you're finding a use for reading markers, you can always find a use for automating how to set markers. And this is going to be a lot easier than going through and having to jump from one marker to the next to read or set information. We're just going to make a variable new mark. We'll do markers.createMarker and then pass in a number, which is going to be the time in seconds that you want this marker to be placed at. So let's see a good time in here. It looks like right around 15 looks like a nice open area. We'll set this to 15. And then we will call this variable that we have attached to this created marker and we'll do dot end equals 48 dot name equals testing marker dot comments. This marker was created so you can learn to build a more efficient workflow and then new mark dot type chapter. So when this is all said and done, we should have a little over a 30 second marker uh, with these things attached to it. So let's see if this works. And there we go. It's kind of blending into everything, but you can see right here it says testing marker. This marker was created so you can learn to build a more efficient workflow. And you can see it's a chapter. All this information is in here and everything worked. Now, this last thing I'm going to show you is kind of cool. I'm going to go in and duplicate this sequence and then come out and I will clear all the markers off there. So now we don't have to deal with any of these markers again. But say for some reason I want to just make a marker that goes the length of each one of these clips and kind of hovers up there so I can read things better. I don't know what the application for this would be. It's just going to be fun. What we'll do is I'm going to target this variable I create. I'm going to go variable track, do app.project.activesequence and video track zero. So I'm going to be targeting this first track in the sequence. Then I'll go variable num clips track dot clips dot num items, counting the number of clips in this track. And then we'll start the for loop. So I'm going to go for a equals zero. A is less than the number of clips on the sequence and then keep adding to a. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new marker using the same way we did up here, markers.createNewMarker at track.clipsA.start.seconds, meaning it's going to create a marker for this first clip at wherever the start time in seconds is. We will then, with this new mark variable, we will go newmark.end equals the track.clipsAN seconds, and then we will change the name to track dot clips a dot name. So we're just going to be transferring the information that we can read about this clip up into the markers that we are setting above. And when you run this, it looks like that. So you can see we have the name of the movie clip and it is going from the very beginning of that clip to the very end. So there you go. That's all I have to share with you guys today about using markers. You should be able to do just about whatever you need to do to customize your workflow with these commands and the code that I shared with you guys today in here. But if you're still curious about some things and want me to clarify anything, please leave a comment below or just, you know, go to the website premieronscript.com and shoot me a message directly. I really hope you'll watch the next movie because I'm going to talk about accessing a clip and then going up to the effects window and modifying the effects that we've already applied to that clip. So it's going to be really great. I'm going to have a nice document that allows you to reference uh, how to modify clipped effects in a really efficient way. So please tune in for the next video and thank you for watching this one. I'll see you next time.